Hello friends, in this video we shall discuss with respect to Assistant Engineer Electronics paper which has been conducted by KPCL on 18th February 2024. The total number of questions were 100 in number and the marks allotted is also of 100. Now, already we have discussed with respect to Assistant Engineer and Junior Engineer paper of uh, electrical and instrumentation. If you have not watched that video, links are given in the description. Also, you can click on the i button. In this part 1 video, we are going to cover from question number 1 to question number 25. Moving on to the first question, what they are given is, see this question is from EMTL, the divergence of D is given by, we know that divergence of D, which is expressed as del dot D, which is equals to rho. So, few textbooks, they will be writing it as rho V, not a problem. Then, D, I can write it as epsilon times of E, which is equals to rho I am going to get. Say, suppose if the medium is an homogeneous medium, at that time I can take epsilon as a constant, then del dot E equals to rho by epsilon I am going to get. Del dot E equals to rho by epsilon, but del dot D equals to rho. So, the suitable option that is going to follow is option 1 is correct. Nothing but del dot D equals to rho. Similarly, in terms of magnetic field, if I express a del dot B with respect to Gauss law, I am going to get a del dot B equals to 0. Second question, the pointing vector is given by, let us get into the option E cross H, E dot H, E plus H, E plus or minus H. We know that the pointing vector is expressed as E cross H. The corresponding option that is going to follow is option 1 is correct. Third question, successive approximation type digital voltmeter is based on the principle of, the options what they have given is acceleration of an object, weight of an object, velocity of an object, momentum of an object. We know that it depends on weight of an object, nothing but option 2 is going to follow. Fourth question, the cathode ray oscilloscope, nothing but in short we are going to call it as CRO is used to measure voltage, yes you can measure voltage, you can measure frequency also, you can measure phase also. So, you can measure both voltage, frequency as well as phase. How you are going to measure the voltage means the number of uh, divisions it has covered multiplied by the scale. Frequency how you are going to measure is with respect to the inverse of time period you are going to take. Time period you are going to calculate, then inverse of it will be your frequency. Similarly, you are going to measure the phase also. So, the suitable option that is going to follow is option D in nothing but all of the above. Fifth question, which of the following signals are generated by Wayne Bridge Oscillator? We are aware with respect to Hartley Oscillator, Colpitt Oscillator, RC Phase Shift Oscillator, Wayne Bridge Oscillator and Crystal Oscillator also. See, what is the important thing we have to remember in oscillators means what is the condition for Barkosan criteria and what is the output frequency nothing but the equation of frequency of all the oscillators we have to remember right next in the case of Wayne bridge oscillator we are going to make use of an op amp based configuration so the output will be a sinusoidal waveform options what they have given is a square wave sine wave triangular wave and pulse wave so the answer is sine wave nothing but option b is going to follow sixth question what they are given is uh, what are the ideal characteristics of an op amp let us get into the options see first option what they are given is infinite input and infinite output resistance second option low input and low output resistance third option low input and high output resistance and the fourth option what they have given is infinite input impedance and zero output resistance impedance or resistance you have to consider now we have to know what are the practical characteristics of an op amp and ideal characteristics of an op amp we should be familiar with respect to input impedance output impedance open loop gain closed loop gain bandwidth cmrr power supply rejection ratio, sleeve rate, all these things are very, very important. Apart from that, we have to know what do you mean by input and output offset current and input and output offset voltage. These things are important. The ideal op-amp characteristics will be having infinite input resistance and zero output resistance. If they are asking what is the practical value means, the practical value will be in the mega ohm range and 
output resistance will be from 25 to 100 ohms these are all practical characteristics so the suitable option that is going to follow is option d nothing but infinite input resistance and a zero output resistance seventh question this question is based on inverting summer why two inputs are applied two or more inputs if you are applying means it is a summer configuration at what at which terminal they are applying means at the inverting terminal they have applied so this configuration is inverting summer or summing amplifier let us not get into the options directly we should be in a position to solve or say suppose if you are getting into the options what they have given is two options are of positive value and two options are of negative value so directly you can eliminate first option and a fourth option why input is a positive applying at the inverting terminal output should be 180 degree out of phase representing by negative sign simple things what is the output expression you are going to get v naught equals to minus of the feedback resistance into v1 divided by r1 plus v2 divided by r2 if I say suppose one more voltage source is there means you are going to take it as v3 divided by r3 and so on I am going to take this uh, 12 kilo ohm as feedback resistor and R1 value is 4 kilo ohm and R2 value is 6 kilo ohm, V1 value is 1 volt and V2 value is 2 volt. That's it. So you are going to get a minus of 12. No need to write that kilo. Why? Numerator you are having kilo and in the denominator also you will be having that kilo term. So that kilo and kilo is going to get cancelled. Don't worry with the things. 4 and 6 you are getting. 4 and 6 what is the LCM? 12 is the LCM minus 12 times of you are going to get a 12, 4, 3 is 12, then 6, 2 is 12, so you are getting 2 into 2. 12 and 12 is going to get cancelled. What is the value of V0? V0 value will be equal to minus 7 volt. Say suppose the time is getting up. You have to answer. You should not opt for A and D. You should opt for B or C. If you are solving, then you will be coming to know that the option is C. Say, suppose time is up and uh, you have to attend it. Go for luck. That's it. Probability will be 0.5. Option C minus 7 volts. Eighth question what they have given. The output of the comparator they are asking. Now, look at the things. In the case of comparator, you will be having, you will be having two inputs. You will be having two inputs first input i am going to take it as v1 and the second input i am going to take it as v2 second input i am going to take it as v2 these things are applied at the inverting terminal and non-inverting terminal and one more thing you will not be having the feedback so what is the output value let me assume that the power supply is a plus vcc and minus vee what is the maximum output that can be achieved is not plus vcc the maximum value it can achieve is plus v saturation and the negative value it can achieve is minus v saturation minus v saturation so the v naught will be fluctuating between plus v saturation and minus v saturation now the v naught value will be plus v saturation when you will be getting plus v saturation means when v plus will be dominating v minus correct similarly when you will be getting minus v saturation means when v minus will be dominating v plus that's it say suppose if these things are equal means then you are going to get the output as zero v plus equals to v minus the voltage values i am taking here v plus and v minus you here you can refer it as v1 and v2 also v2 will be v plus and v minus will be v1 that's it like this we can take so let us get into the option what they are given is at positive saturation only at negative saturation only at positive and negative saturation and in the linear region right so the option that's going to follow is option c is nothing but at a, positive or negative saturation at positive or negative saturation right corresponding option c is going to follow ninth question what they are given the output stage of the peak detector is the output stage of the peak detector is first option amplifier voltage follower switching circuit and a rectifier 
So we know that it is a voltage follower. Nothing but option B is going to follow. Lots of good questions they have asked with respect to op-amp based configurations. Right? So good questions they have asked from the op-amp. You can score easily. The value of P what they are given is 1010. You need to perform logical AND operation with the Q. 0101. It is not concatenation operation. It is a logical AND operation. It is a logical AND operation. What is 0 AND with 1? 0. False AND with true is false only. True AND with false is false only. Only you will be getting 1 AND with 1 is 1. Rest of the cases you will be getting 0 only. Rest of the combinations you will be getting 0 only. Let us get into the option 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1 they have given. Now look at the things. P is of 4 bit wide. Q is also of 4 bit wide. Our option nothing but answer should be of 4 bit wide only. The value of R will be 0, 0, 0, 0. Nothing but option 2 is going to follow. 11th question C what they are given is C equals to A and with B. This question. Uh, what they are asking is this is a statement of HDL code you consider right in that you will be having VHDL and Verilog right in the case of Verilog you are going to write the each statement in uh, like a prefix will be assign assign some statement assign some statement like this you are going to write this is a statement of structural description behavioral description data flow description switched level description it is of uh, data flow description it is of data flow description. Option B is going to follow. Twelfth question C again a very log code. A repeat of 32. While of some condition you are going to specify that uh, the while loop is going to execute. Uh, execute for uh, 32 times. That's it. Execute 32 times. This is the meaning. So what they have uh, written is the loop should be enclosed between begin and end. If one statement is there, not required. If multiple statements are there, then it has to be enclosed between begin and end. So, hash 100 is representing the delay element. You have to wait, delay. Then you have to execute i equals to i plus 1. Say, suppose i equals to 0 means next value will become 1. Say, suppose i value is 1000 means next value will become 1001. So, these things uh, need to be repeated at 32 times and uh, every time the delay has to be maintained. So the first option what they have given is i is incremented 32 times with a delay of 100 screen time units each time. Yes, option 1 is going to follow. Second option what they have given is i is incremented 100 times okay, with a delay of 32 screen units they have given. No, delay is of uh, 100. So i is incremented 32 times. So option B is wrong. In the option C, what they have given is I is incremented with a delay of they have added both the elements. So, option C is also wrong. Fourth option I is incremented 3200 times. They have multiplied. Even this option is also wrong. The corresponding option that is going to follow is option 1 is correct. Nothing but I is incremented 32 times with a delay of 100 screen units each time. Very, very important. In the 13th question, what they are asking is, uh, uh, they have given the piece of code. What they are asking is, uh, whether this code belongs to half adder with the data flow modeling, structural modeling, or half subtractor with the data flow modeling, or half subtractor with the structural modeling. See, this code is not a data flow modeling. So, directly you can eliminate option A and option C, you can eliminate so easily. This code is a structural modeling. This code is a structural modeling and it is a VHDL code. They have given port declarations also. Architecture, architecture name and component they are also inclu included. Now, look at the things carefully. Here, the question arises whether it is a half subtractor or half adder. In the case of half adder, you will be having the sum and carry. So, the sum you are going to realize with the help of XOR gate and carry you are going to realize with the help of AND gate. But in the case of subtractor, you are going to realize a difference and borrow. You are going to re realize the difference with the help of XOR gate and borrow you are going to make use of AND gate and you are going to make use of NOT gate also. 
and gate and not gate also you're going to make use so uh, this code refers to a half order using structural modeling option d is going to follow 14th question the cmos inverter where most of the energy is consumed in uh, switching from one state to another while both pmos and nmos are in saturation pmos is in linear region and nmos is in saturation region third option nmos is in linear region and pmos is in saturation region fourth option both are in linear region now if i am realizing an inverter you will be having a power rails that is a vdd and vss or ground potential you can consider see you are going to tap the output the pull up network is made up of pmos transistors we are aware of it and the pull down network is made up of nmos transistor so here you will be having the pull up network that will be realized with the help of pmos transistor similarly you will be having the pull down network which will be realized with the help of nmos transistor simple logic is uh, pmos can is in a position to allow strong logic one and nmos is allow is in the capability of allowing strong logic zero that's why you are going to place at the at those positions now when pmos is on nmos is off that's why we tell that those two things are complement to each other but say suppose pmos is in saturation region and nmos is also in saturation region at that time there will be a direct current that will be flowing from vdd potential to ground potential at that time the resist the transistors will be acting like a resistive network so pmos and nmos are in saturation region at that time you will be getting the leakage current so energy will be consumed option 1 is going to follow 15th question what they are asking is for a mosfet a dc bias current is doubled while keeping its all the dimensions as constant then the transconductance gm is given by we know that the current equation id equals so let me take or let me consider in saturation region in saturation region you will be getting mu n times of c ox into w by l into vgs minus vth the whole square all divided by 2 vgs minus vth whole square whole divided by 2 so this is the current equation you are going to get ids now how you are going to define the stans conductance that is gm means you are going to differentiate the current divided by or with respect to vds you are going to define so when you are defining you will be getting under root of the current elements you are going to get 2id something like this you are going to get right so what is the thing you are going to get when current is becoming double when current is becoming two times two times then uh, gm will be increased by under root two times square root of two you are going to get so the corresponding option that's going to follow is uh, increases by two times increases by root two times or decreases by two times decreases by uh, root two times or not altered so that is option b is going to follow 16th question what they are asking is a digital multimeter is used for first option what they are given measuring ac dc voltage and resistance measuring ac current and voltage measuring dc current and resistance fourth option what they are given is measuring ac voltage and resistance see with the help of digital voltmeter you can able to measure ac and dc currents ac and dc voltage and also you can able to measure the resistance also corresponding option option 1 is going to follow let us move on to the 17th question in the 17th question what they are asking is say suppose if fm is going to indicate the frequency of the message signal and fc is going to indicate the frequency of the carrier signal then the bandwidth of amplitude modulated wave is given by directly you can tell two times of fm first option what they have given is fc plus fm fc minus fm two times of fm and two times of fc they have given so the answer is two times of the message frequency signal option c is going to follow 18th question what they are asking the percentage power saving when the carrier signal and one of the side bands are suppressed with a depth modulation of 100% they are asking see in the case of simple am let us get into the options so in the case of simple am you will be having the carrier power and you will be having side band powers also in the side band power you will be having upper side band and you will be having the lower side band now 
in the case of dsbsc in the case of dsbsc what you will be having is you will be having only the upper side band you will be having and lower side band you will be having the carrier you are going to suppress it but in the case of single side band uh, modulation what you are going to have means you will be having either upper side band you will be having or you will be having lower side band not both but in the case of vestigial side band what you will be having is you will be having say suppose if you are retaining upper side band then uh, some part of lower side band you are going to retain or say suppose uh, some part of upper side band if you are taking then complete lower side band you will be taking now the question is with respect to single side band modulation you are going to suppress the carrier and one of the side band you are going to suppress it so let me go for percentage power saving say suppose if you are uh, going for ssb with respect to am if you are considering then one of the side band you are going to take say suppose let me take it as upper side band whole divided by then you will be having the carrier power and uh, the upper side band power plus lower side band power you will be having now this one i can write it as a mu square aac square divided by 8r all divided by this one i can write it as ac square divided by 2r into 1 plus mu square i'm going to take r value i'm going to take it as 1 2 ones so 2 fours i'll be getting so ac and ac is go these terms are going to get cancelled so what is the term that i left is of mu square a whole divided by 4 into 1 plus mu square now the modulation index what they are given is 100 percent then mu value will become 1 so what is the things i'm going to get a 1 divided by 1 plus 1 is a 2 2 fours 8 1 divided by 8 roughly i can take 0.125 or 12.5 you are going to take so the percentage power saving you are going to get 100 minus of 12.5 which will be 87.5 percent you are going to get approximating i will be getting 83.33 percent 83.33 percent i am going to get so this is the percentage power saving what you are going to get when you are going to make use of a single sideband modulation when compared to am when compared to am the another way of explanation or the de uh, derivation they will be uh, giving in the textbook right option a is going to follow 19th question see just now i have explained what do you mean by vestigial sideband let us get into the option the vestigial sideband wave consists of carrier signal lsb and usb option wrong lsb and usb second option also wrong third option lsb or usb third option is also wrong one side band and vestige of another so option d is going to follow carrier signal lsb usb this is simple am this is simple am now lsb and usb it is a double side band suppress carrier or dsb you can take lsb or usb means that is a single side band modulation single side band modulation 20th question simple thing it's based on aliasing concept right so nyquist criteria a message signal made of multiple frequency component as a maximum frequency of 4 kilohertz frequency range are more but the maximum frequency what it is taking is 4 kilohertz then what is the minimum sampling frequency they are telling that's it so the minimum sampling frequency according to sampling theorem that is to overcome aliasing effect is a two times of uh, the highest frequency component of the message signal that's it so what is the highest frequency component 4 kilo so how much you're going to get 8 kilohertz let us get into the option less than 8 kilo not at all preferred more than 8 kilo yes you can prefer but minimum range they are asking see if they are asking what should be the sampling frequency 8 kilo is well and good even if you are keeping 40 kilo or 20 kilo is also correct but they are asking for minimum sampling frequency then you have to opt for option b that is 8 kilohertz 21st question see this kind of the questions they have repeated even for electrical fellows also common questions they have asked which of the following statements is false let us get into the third option now this del of t is impulse 
how we are going to derive this del of t means a differentiation of unit step signal u of t u of t how we are going to define is a def, uh, derive sorry differentiation of the ramp signal you are going to take that will be your unit step signal what will be r of t signal means it is a derivative of parabolic signal it is derivative of parabolic signal so based on this so you can uh, go for option c nothing but del of t equals to they have given integration of u of t that in it is not integration it should be differentiation of u of t or the derivative of u of t you have to consider so option c is going to follow 22nd question c in pulse modulation system the number of samples are required to ensure no loss of information is given by fourier transform Nyquist theorem, Parseval's theorem and Laplace theorem. Simple thing is they have altered and they are asking that's it. Now you please get into this uh, question. So in this you are, we are defining the sampling theorem. In a similar way they have asked that's it. Right. So the answer for this is uh, Nyquist theorem. That is option B is going to follow. So these things you are going to perform in order to avoid aliasing effect. What do you mean by aliasing means overlapping of higher frequency signal to lower frequency signal whereby the signal is uh, or the information is uh, lost thereby you, you are not in a position to retrieve it. 23rd question in 8086 microprocessor the width of address bus is of. Now we are very much aware with respect to microcontroller and microprocessor 8085 and microprocessor 8086. Let us recap it once again. See, in the case of microcontroller, you will be having the address bus which is of 16 bit wide. And the control bus is of 8 bit wide. And the data bus is also of 8 bit wide. In the case of microprocessor also 8085 same thing will hold good. But in the case of microprocessor 8086 things will vary. The data bus and control bus is of 16 bit wide. The data bus and control bus is of a 16 bit wide but the address bus here which is of a 20 bit wide how you are going to calculate the address is very very important why no any register is of 20 bit then how we are going to generate that uh, addressing capabilities so these things are very very important so the option over here is uh, option for nothing but 20 bit wide is correct now in order to realize this, we have to know the formula that is a physical address is given by physical address is given by a segment register value you are going to make use. Segment register starting address you will be getting segment register uh, value into 10H or 16 in decimal plus offset we are going to take. Offset register value say suppose BP like this you are going to take. BP, IP, you are going to make use of these things. This is of 16 bit wide. You are going to append one zero. Then you are going to add another 16 bit data. Thereby you are going to get a 20 bit wide. The address is of a 20 bit. The address is of 20 bit. If you have not watched that uh, microprocessor fast track revision video, links are given in the description. Also, you can click on the I button. I have explained in detail properly. Please go through it. 24th question. When the result of arithmetic or logical operation is a zero, nothing but output is zero, then which flag is going to set they are asking. So zero means what output you are going to get zero, then it will be affected by zero flag. Binary bit, no. It is not having any significance. Zero flag, sign flag, overflow flag. Zero flag is the correct answer. Option B is going to follow. Sign flag, say suppose MSB equals to 1, MSB equals to 0. It is going to tell whether the number is positive or negative in the case of signed number, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. Overflow flag is conceptual overflow. Say suppose when you are having two positive numbers and the result is negative, then conceptual overflow. Say suppose when you are having two negative numbers and the result is positive, then it is a conceptual overflow. Nothing but the storage element is not enough, that's it. Say suppose if you are adding one positive number with a negative number, you will not be getting a overflow. In the 25th question, what they are asking is we have to identify the type of addressing. 
So this question is from microprocessor 8086. So the instruction what they have given is move AX comma within the braces they have given 2500H. Now the addressing mode they are asking. The first addressing mode what they have given is immediate addressing mode. Sorry it is not an immediate value. In the second addressing mode they have specified direct addressing mode, indirect addressing mode and register addressing mode. In the fourth option they have specified register addressing mode. Since they have specified register addressing mode it is a wrong one. Why 2500H is not a registered one, right? AX, BX, CX, DX or IP, BP like this if you have specified, if they have specified means then it would have been a register addressing mode. Now look at the things. It should be either direct addressing mode or indirect addressing mode. What type of addressing mode it is? It is a direct addressing mode. It is a direct addressing mode. Say suppose instead of representing like this, if they would have specified move AX comma a BP of 2500H then I would have opted for indirect addressing mode. So this one is a direct addressing mode option B is going to follow. In this video we have covered from question number 1 to question number 25. In the next part of the video we are going to cover from question number 26 to question number 50. Already we have made the detailed video analysis of AE and JE electrical paper and instrumentation paper if you have not watched that video links are given in the description also you can click on the i button to stay updated with things please like this video share this video with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel craving Gyan. all the best for your results thank you